Hello and welcome back and today I want to talk to you guys about how to set up, install and play games from your Steam library on a Synology NAS. Now before I even get into it I'll try and keep the intro as brief as possible. Why should a person use a NAS drive from Synology for their Steam library? Now lots of people and I'm sure most of you watching this know that SSDs have one huge advantage and one huge disadvantage. Namely they are very, very quick. They can give you between three and 500 megabytes per second on SATA in traditional random read-write environments. But at the same time, the cost of SSDs is substantially higher than that of hard drives. Now, hard drives are slower. They will give you somewhere between 100 to 120 megabytes per second read over SATA, but are significantly cheaper. And in the case of, say, NAS hard drives, it adds, you can get standard NAS hard drives at a third of the cost of traditional SSDs. Now these SSDs here, this one is at just over 250 nicker, and it gives you two terabytes of storage. This two terabyte hard drive is around 80 pounds and all of those include VAT. Now if you were to get three or four of these hard drives and set them up in a RAID 5 environment or maybe even a RAID 0, you would get well over 300 megabytes per second read. With the added advantage that the more hard drives you add, not only do you get more storage, but you get increased read and write. After four or five drives, you will end up with faster speeds than one terabyte. Now in the case of Seagate, you can go down to one terabyte, with one terabyte hard drives being substantially more affordable overall, and you can then populate with, say, Barracudas, if you really are watching the pennies, and you could get a NAS populate it with one or 500 gig or one terabyte or 500 gig hard drives and at a significantly lower cost overall than two terabytes at 250 nicker get a nas involved as well at 5 gbe 10 gbe or 1 gbe with link aggregation and give yourself greater speeds and access to data than that of ssds as well as the storage capabilities too so that's one of the main reasons for me about getting a NAS for your Steam gaming library. Why a Synology NAS? Well, because it's easily one of the most user-friendly NAS platforms out there. And for gamers out there, particularly people that use Steam, you want things to be streamlined and easy. And with the games in the Steam library, particularly in 2019 and 2020, outside of nice, easy, straightforward gaming... The majority of modern games these days are absolutely huge. They are gargantuan in size. Now, if we look at a game like Red Dead Redemption, we can look at Red Dead Redemption 2. Hopefully that will come up. We can just see just how big, oh, well, it's not even readily available on there. Let's go with Fallout 4. Nice and simple. We can look at the size of a game like Fallout 4 overall. Oh, it's asked me to confirm my age. Would you, Adam and Eve, it? Just let me view the page. Yes, I was born in 1948. Why did you ask? Um, but if you scroll down, you can see that the specifications and size of a game like this, once you've got all of the patches and all of the updates, are absolutely massive. It requires you to have at least 30 gigabytes. And once you've got all the DLC and mods, this will be closer to 50. And with games like GTA 5 and more also increasing the size of games, two terabytes isn't a lot so you'll end up buying all these games and a lot of the games you will buy but not download the reason being that you can't download them because you don't have the space but it's all often the case because of licensing disputes licenses expiring games and developers falling out hello kojima and um konami games like that a lot of the time you have games removed from Steam, from PSN and Xbox Live. And if you haven't downloaded the game, even though you've purchased it, you could lose it forever. And that's another great reason to go ahead and make sure that all your games are on a NAS stored away. So, how do you set up your Steam library on a NAS? Well, first things first, head over to your Synology NAS. If you don't already know how to log it in, make sure you've downloaded and installed the Synology Assistant application that will scan your local area network and find the NAS. You may also need this tool later on. Once you're there, go into File Station and make sure you've already set up all of your hard drives in the right RAID. 
After three drives, I recommend a RAID 5 environment or Synology Hybrid RAID, known as SHR. From here, click Create and go to Create New Shared Folder. This new shared folder is where your library is going to live. Call this folder what you will, but I'm going to call it Steam. From there, you say where it lives, and if you've got multiple RAID arrays in the device, these will all be showing here. On top of that, you can create a recycle bin to retrieve data later on, as well as create encryption and permissions for different users. Moving forward, you can create all kinds of individual settings and quotas to make sure that your Steam library doesn't get out of hand or that you receive alerts when data reaches certain limits. And after that, click apply, and this will set up our brand new shared folder. Be sure to make sure that whoever you're connecting with, say if it's you, the admin, or a friend, or a family member, can access it if they need to. Click OK, and now we've created our shared folder. Next, we need to head back to the Synology Assistant application. Right-click and select Map Drive. From here, we need to add our login credentials. And after that, it will then invite us to map our network drive. Find the folder we've just created, in this case Steam, and click Next. Then select the drive uh, letter that we want it to appear as. I'm going to select the letter O. Then select Reconnect at Login to make sure you only have to go through this once each time. Select Next, and it will once again ask you to confirm your credentials. And there we go. We can open the map drive if we so choose, but click finish. And now our mapped network drive is ready and visible on our Windows machine. There's the Steam library there. Ignore this one. That's from a previous video. I'll just get rid of that. So there's our Steam library right there. Now this Steam library is what we're going to put all of our games on. Now I've already put lots of data on this NAS, but when you first get it, this blue bar will be right the way down at the bottom because you've just set up your NAS already. From here, we need to head over to Steam. And from here, go to the top left option, Steam, and then go down to Settings. From Settings, select Downloads on the side of the screen, and then head over to Steam Library Folders. Then, from here, you'll notice that your C drive, likely the SSD in your PC or Mac system, is the default. Head to Add Library Folder, and then at the top bar here, do the drop down and select that map network drive we've just created, otherwise known as the Steam folder. Now, what you may notice is if you try to select that folder now, it won't let you because it, some versions of Steam or platforms that you're on will not allow you to use the root folder, which makes sense. There's too much history of certain games, particularly in the last couple of decades, that install in the root directory and once you un uninstall the game have a tendency, a tendency to completely delete the root. So I can see why this will be important. To get to avoid this problem, go back into your Steam library folder via Windows Explorer and create a folder within there. Call this folder whatever you want, but for me, I'm just going to call it Steam Games. Once you've entered that folder, you can then close that window again, and this time go back to Add Library Folder, click the drop down again, select O, and boom, there's our Steam Games Library. Select the Select button, it will quickly scan, and boom, it has found our Steam Library Folder and made it the default. If it doesn't happen to make it the default, right click and select Make Default Folder. And now, any game that we choose to download or re-download to play on our Steam platform, any of the games we purchase from demos to full games will now be in, uh, downloaded and played from our Synology NAS. And there you go. That is how to set up a Steam library on your Synology NAS. Don't get me wrong, of course, this setup will cost you more than buying an SSD. But the amount of space it gives you, as well as the future proofing it provides to you, and then of course, the added benefits than a network uh, attached storage device gives you in terms of storage, Plex Media, VMs, widespread backup and DLNA and more cannot be understated. But I'm gonna wrap things up here. I hope you found this helpful. I will be doing a performance overview of Steam games being played on a 10 GBE NAS, a 5 GBE NAS, a 2.5 GBE NAS and a 1 GBE NAS very, very soon. 
The reason I've done it with this video is because I'm currently using OBS and OBS and trying to play games at the same time just do not play nice and it would have ruined this recording. But I will be doing that video comparing those gaming speeds utilizing two or three of the same games on different NAS platforms with different NAS speeds. Do let us know if that's the sort of stuff you're into. But otherwise, click like if you enjoyed this, click subscribe to stay more informed about NAS and I'll see you next time.